Are you getting married and want to make your dress on a budget of under $5? Are you not getting married but want to see what it's like to wear a wedding dress anyway? Or are you either married or unmarried and want to see me make a wedding dress out of paper towels? Well then this video is for you. Today I will be showing you how I attempted to make a wedding dress out of paper towels. They're affordable, available, and very fragile. And just as an important side note, I am not getting married. I am not old enough to get married, and even if I was eligible for marriage, I don't think I would really want my wedding dress to be made out of paper towels. Sorry. But I am not judging if you do. So if you want to see how I turned one roll of paper towels and some toilet paper into this creative-ish dress, then keep watching. Here are my materials. I've got two toilet paper rolls, and then I'm gonna try using a paper towel roll. Maybe, because of some of the longer things, but I want to do like waves, like that, exactly like that, like this. I'm thinking of making like the bodice out of this. I think the best option will be to use some zip ties. Don't ask me why we have all of these, but we do. I then began the process of starting the paper towel bodice by ripping three layers of paper towels that was a few inches bigger than it would actually fit me. By the way, I ended up only using two of the layers because it was way too bulky. Then I folded the layers in half so I could cut out the shape of a bodice type thingy. I marked where I wanted to cut with chalk, and you can do this by pretending the paper towel is a nice shirt that you want to try on, and marking where you need to adjust on it. Then I cut it out. I love the snipping sounds in there because doesn't it sound so cute when it's sped up? It reminds me of the sound of a pet rat when it's eating. Anyways, then I had a general bodice shape, but it was still too weird looking, so I did the school dart thing to it and chopped the bodice into three, no wait, nine pieces. Yeah, and then I threw away three of those because I didn't need them. By the way, I would like to warn you that I'm, yes, I am 50% aware that my sewing skills are relatively atrocious sometimes, but what better way to practice than using paper towels? <laughs> then I paused the sewing process to observe my brother delicately carrying his pet duck Dorothy up to the window, and then doing an interesting little dance with her. Then I continued the dressmaking process, wearing a Victorian dress that had just arrived in the mail. It was for a Revolutionary War ball that I was going to in a couple of weeks for my history class. Homeschoolers are interesting. After I pieced together the paper towels and sewed them, I made them resemble garbage bags as I flipped them back right side out. The cool thing about this material is that there's literally no need for an iron, you can just fold it down. Then I sewed the side pieces to the front piece, turning them into one big happy family. Oh, and I also sewed darts and reinforced all the rippy parts of the paper towel so they wouldn't rip. Then I gently removed the ends and rounded the zip ties so that they wouldn't stab me while I was wearing this dress. Then I fashioned fun little channels for the zip ties to slide through. And I decided to add that lovely face of mine in the video because it was interesting. After that I tried the bodice on over my stylish Victorian garb. And now I have what's sort of a bodice-ish. We have the general shape. I still have to decide how on earth I'm going to close this thing because I don't really trust the strength capacity of the paper towel being able to hold in like a ribbon and I don't think a zipper is going to work either. I could try a zipper. I haven't really had too much practice with zippers or success, shall we say. Avoiding these impending problems, I moved on to the skirt, folding down a long sheet of paper towels a few inches bigger than my waist. Now for some reason I don't seem to have the footage for this next part, but basically I took four sheets of paper towels that were really long, sewed them together, and reinforced all the terrible lines. Terrible, like, terrible, not terrible, they're not terrible. I mean, they kind of are, but anyway. Which resulted in one big checkerboard of fabric. Now if you make this dress and your desire is to resemble Olaf the Snowman from Frozen, then I recommend you do what I did the first time and pleat the whole thing. There's me trying on my snowman skirt and trying to make myself liking it, but failing. Okay, we are encountering a bit of a problem, and it is that the skirt is so bulky and hideous that I've decided not to proceed with the 
um, pleated skirt. It just looks really bulky and bad with the paper towel. So instead, I am going to be basically ripping up the, like, this thing here and I'm gonna have to just make it a shorter dress because the pleats aren't working at all. Alas, so I ripped up the unworking bad pleats and sliced a bunch of dagger shaped lines to put panels in. Good morning! It is the next day and today I shall attempt to complete this endeavorous task of finishing this dress. So it's got these extra panels. This is a huge mess. Let's clean it up. That's better. I've always wanted to do that, even though it's kind of cringy and weird, but... Yeah. Anyway, then I made this weird looking panel thing only because the skirt wasn't wide enough to sew around me. And then I tried it on and did a weird little dance with it. The waist was too wide, so later I ended up putting Velcro on it. Then I switched back to the bodice and basted three layers of toilet paper, the width of the circumference of my arm, which automatically ruched and turned into a puff sleeve shape. By the way, nearly the whole time I was watching Yes to the Dress to get some inspiration for these dresses and just because it's kind of an interesting show, so if, if you catch me looking at my iPad a lot, that's why. Anyway, then I ripped a bunch of long toilet paper strands with the veil, about the length you'd use when you... well, never mind. I twisted them and sewed them to the square little toilet paper thing and then snipped off all the uneven ends. Then I made this little white clip thingy for the veil, using toilet paper and an old hair clip with about four teeth left. Doesn't teeth sound weird for a clip? It makes a clip sound like a detached mouth that is biting down on your hair. Then I twisted up some strands of toilet paper into worm-like formation and glued them into a twisted up flowery shape. Then I decapitated some zip ties and used the heads, <clears throat> I mean the ends, to add prettiness to the dress by painting them with gold nail polish. Then I glued them to the dress along with the other toilet paper decorations. I found these plastic dual thingies that I crafted with when I was like seven, and I ended up decorating the dress with those two. This dress ended up being a bit shorter and more vintage-y than I wanted it, and it wouldn't really be my style for a real wedding dress, or at least a wedding dress made of better fabric, but there's only so much you can do with paper towel. Finally, my mom helped me put Velcro on the back of the bodice and the skirt. I left the two separate because it was going to be way too hard to put them on together. Pretty much done with the dress. I'm gonna try to do the makeover today while it's still light and it's still a weekend. Okay, now let's get ready. Jessica is wearing a bounty paper towel dress in the color starch with toilet paper puff sleeves and a vintage ish skirt. Paper towel.